Hey guys, what's happening? It's Dean from Electronic Sounds. Today we're going to talk about putting a limiter on the master out in Beatmaker 3. I've got a groove here that I've started with my copper drum kit. You may have heard this groove before, and what we're going to do is we're going to put a limiter on the master out here. The reason for a limiter, guys, is we're going to boost the overall volume, but at the same time, we're going to keep any peaks from going over a threshold that we set, typically like 0 dB. But first off, it's important to note that a limiter is not going to fix problems in your mix, um, and it's not going to fix a bad mix. So before you add a limiter, you're going to want to make sure that you don't have any clipping, or you're going to want to maybe add a limiter at the beginning of a project. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll see that as we reset the peak levels, neither one of those is going into the red which is key, that you don't want to have clipping when you're starting to add your limiter. Or again, you can just add it at the beginning of a project. One of the reasons also that you might want to use a limiter on your uh, master out guys is so that you don't damage your ears or your speakers or your headphones. Let's say you're working on like a really loud mix with a bunch of tracks in it and you add a new sound or a new synth and that you know preset maybe is like a good 10 dB louder than the stuff you're working with, well, that could really damage potentially your ears, your headphones, or your speakers. So having a limiter on the master bus is going to prevent any really loud rogue frequencies from hitting over that 0 dB threshold. Let's go ahead and add a limiter. We'll start by opening up the effects tab, which by default is going to have highlighted whichever bank you've got open inside of Beatmaker 3. Currently, I just have one bank that I'm working with. We have our main output and a couple of effects tracks here. So if we click the bank label up here, it will allow us to choose, you know, what track we're working with for our effects. And we want to go to the main output, you know, which currently here does not have anything on it. and we want to go to the main output, you know, which currently here does not have anything on it. We'll click add an effect, and we'll go to audio units, uh, and we will load the limiter from Amazing Noises. We'll take a look here at this plugin. This is pretty much my go-to limiter when using Beatmaker 3 right now. We can adjust the input gain, we can add a little bit of harmonic saturation, um, and we can adjust the ceiling level here, which is you know, pretty much the most important thing. Your output, um, no matter how much volume you, well, potentially, you know, let's not go crazy, uh, but potentially, uh, you know, you can jam quite a bit of volume feed into this thing, and it's, it's gonna, you know, not go over whatever you have your ceiling set to. It's currently set to negative 0.5 so it's like half of one decibel less than 0 dB so that's great that gives us like half a decibel of headroom on you know whatever audio this renders out which is good for you know uploading to SoundCloud uh, and just kind of a general rule you probably don't want to go all the way to 0 dB um, on your renders anyhow so this is a really good kind of a default setting I'll typically you know just start feeding in the gain um, to this until I see uh, the attenuation uh, dial start to um, show us that we're going over 0 dB and that it's you know pulling down on those peaks to get them even well not I keep saying 0 dB but in this case it's going to be whatever our ceiling is set to which is currently um, you know, negative half of a dB. So what we'll do to set this is I'll just press play and I'll feed our input gain until we see this starting to, you know, attenuate what's going over zero dB. You'll see what I mean. It is, you know, going to get louder as I bring the input gain up. So just be aware of that. Okay, so I've brought our input gain up four and a half decibels now, and it's just started to, you know, we're hitting over zero dB, and this is pushing those peaks down just a little so that they will remain in line with the zero dB. So basically, what we're doing here, guys, is we're raising the 
the you know the overall volume but we're you know I don't want to say shaving off the peaks, but we're compressing them down. We're basically reducing the dynamic range of our track, which for a few dB is just fine. You know, you can get a few extra dB of level, but what you don't want is you don't want to just slam the volume into this so that it's just, you know, pulling down 10 to 15 decibels of peaks to keep you in line. That doesn't really make a lot of sense, and what you'll get is a, a really squashed sounding um, track that doesn't sound good. Let me uh, see if we can give you an example of what that would sound like. It is going to get louder. So we get this weird, almost like artificial kind of like pumping thing happening. It just doesn't sound good. And you really just want, you know, for me personally, uh, anywhere from when I see this start to move to about, you know, negative five. And it should be, you know, bouncing around. You don't want it just like, for instance, just pulling down on your on your whole mix. Then there's something probably wrong with your mix. Um, but you still want, you know, some movement in this, but not a lot. My my preference, guys, is just when it starts moving between here and the negative five decibels. Another option for this is a different plugin. If we go ahead and delete this effect, let me go back to add another audio unit. And we load the Fred on excuse me, Fred Anton Corvus Maxima plugin. This is pretty much going to do the same thing. It's a maximizer plugin, so it's meant to, you know, raise your overall level, but still keep your peaks from going over to zero decibel. And if we look at this plugin, you'll see that it has quite a bit of, you know, presets here, depending on, you know, what you might need it for. If we choose the master preset and we go ahead and just hit play, you'll get a, you know, good idea of what of what this plugin sounds like as well. Uh, it is going to get a little bit louder in about three, two, one. Now this does make it quite a bit louder. It's doing some other stuff as well, which you know you can adjust depending on your needs. Personally, for my needs, I'm still finding that the amazing noises limiter on the master bus is really doing what I needed to do, which is raising my overall level and giving just a tiny little bit of, um, you know, uh, ability to keep those rogue peaks in line. Uh, I do use the saturation on this plugin, um, but I use it very sparingly. I know this is kind of a buzzword these days, saturation, um, but really what you're adding is you're adding, you know, like harmonic distortion, um, which, in, you know, used lightly, I think is a really good thing. Used extreme, I just think, you know, personally it just destroys the sound of your, of your music. So let's give a listen to if we use that subtly. <laughs> I'll bring the input gain up again, just so we can see some attenuation happening, but just a little. I'm just adding a little bit of saturation, like that. This is literally set to 0.09. It just kind of puts a little bit of a polish on the top end of the mix. Now I'm gonna, you know, push that through so you can really hear what happens if we oversaturate the mix. I mean, it just, you know, distorts, the, you know, the whole thing, and it's just a little bit too much, in my opinion. But I think that used sparingly in these really small amounts can be a really, really good thing, um, you know, to help to help your master shine through, um, you know, for, from what you're rendering out of Beatmaker 3 without coloring and adding too much of its own, um, you know, sound to your mix so you can still sort of sculpt the, you know, the tones and textures that you're into. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this has been, you know, useful to you guys for uh, getting a limiter on the master out in Beatmaker 3. And be sure and stay tuned for more Beatmaker 3 shenanigans.
Yeah, one last thing, guys. I do know that there is a, uh, you know, a limiter that comes with Beatmaker 3. If we go to Dynamics Processor, you know, um, and we choose Mode Limiter, I'm just not a fan of this, uh, of using this um, processor in this way. I don't think it's working quite as expected. Uh, I am getting use out of this as a, you know, a side chainer and as a, a just a regular compressor. Uh, I'll put a link to my side chain uh, Beatmaker 3 tutorial. Um, but yeah, as far as for, for limiting, I really do recommend um, either one of those third-party plugins. And I'm sure there's others. Um, those are just what I've, you know, worked with so far. Thanks for watching, guys.